So today we're going to talk a little bit about what the program is all about, uh, what professionals do in the field, uh, where they work, where students from our program work. Uh, we'll talk about the program structure and work placement. Uh, we'll talk about key skills that uh, you can uh, acquire through this program, uh, what some of our graduates uh, say and some of the feedback from employers. And then we'll move on to, you know, how do you apply and what are the potential next steps. Okay, let's talk about business analytics. Uh, a while ago, the, the Economist came out with this publication uh, talking about data as the new oil and talking about data as the world's most valuable resource. And so we're in an era where um, not just having data, but understanding how to use that data to make better decisions is becoming more and more integral to any business, to any industry. And so when we talk about business analytics, we're really talking about, you know, how can you, or how can we, or how can an organization use data to make better decisions? Uh, how can the customers use data to make better decisions? And how can businesses use data to make better decisions? Uh, if you think about Netflix, you know, if I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that most folks on this call have Netflix. If you think about Netflix, uh, when you log into your Netflix account and you watch a movie, I'm a sci-fi guy, I love sci-fi, and so uh, when I watch uh, either one of the sci-fi movies, by the time you come back the next time, what happens is Netflix, based on your activity, recommends to you uh, what movies you may most likely love to watch. Uh, that's, a, that's huge for the customers. Uh, that's huge because you don't have to scroll through one million titles or through a huge database to find the right movie. Right at your fingertips, you're able to access movies that align with your taste, uh, that align with your preference. Uh, in analytics, that's called a recommender system. And so when we talk about business analytics, we're really talking about how can we empower students so that they gain the necessary skills that they need to help organizations make better decisions. And so what we have here is a, is a graduate program, uh, which means that most of our students already have previous degrees. Uh, some students have in, from different backgrounds, uh, some with degrees in, in marketing, some with degrees in biology. Uh, I remember our first cohort, we had a student uh, with a music background, you know, had a degree in music. And so various degrees, various backgrounds, and they're still able to succeed in the program. Why? Because it's all about how can I help my organization make better decisions with data. Okay. And so, uh, again, the field of business analytics is very broad, very broad. And most of our, our graduates end up uh, in different industries. Uh, some of them end up as data scientists, some are data analysts. Uh, some are um, uh, data storytellers, or what you would call it, data journalists. Uh, business analysts, some of them managing projects that have to do with analytics or AI projects. Uh, some of them end up as programmers, research analysts, and, and, and other uh, opportunities that are out there in, in the industry. Uh, the good news is, from my perspective, uh, the, the world of analytics or data analytics and AI is still very prime, still very young, and there's so much opportunity out there for students that graduate from the program. Uh, there are two streams in the business analytics program. There's the stream for domestic students, uh, which are students that have either their Canadian citizenship or a permanent residence, and there's the stream for international students. Uh, and so the stream for domestic students is about 12 months uh, long, and for international, I'm looking at about 16 months. So it's consecutive semesters for domestic students, three student semesters back to back, a very intensive program, but also a very exciting program. Uh, the admission requirements about two or three year college diploma or university degree. We recommend that, that students um, have taken a course in statistics uh, or students have some kind of background in, in, in mathematics. Now, we're not looking uh, or, or, or we're not asking that the student is proficient uh, in mathematics or an expert in programming language. We teach you all of that. Um, what I always say is that we're looking for students that. I love math, you know, and, and, and would love to learn how to use data to make better decisions. Um, again, and that's the key to what you learn in this program. It's a program, a very intensive, but very exciting. Uh, so many courses, 
Uh, but the key thing you take out of this program is you can walk into an, an organization and if you have access to their data, you can help them make better decisions. Uh, where will I work? Well, some of our graduates uh, work at different companies. Uh, we have a graduate that works at IBM, uh, Assurance Solutions, Empire Life, Trapeze. Uh, you can work in almost any industry. If you think about this, any industry where they need to make better decisions using data. That industry can leverage the skills you will get through this program. And I think that applies to every single industry across the globe. Okay, while well, your professors, uh, the good thing about this program, I, I know right now I have only my picture on that program on, on, on the slide, but trust me, I'm not the only professor in the program. Uh, we, we have more than, uh, I believe, about 12 professors in the program, and, and, and most of them, which is very good, most of them are working in the field and teaching at the same time. And so you have access to professors who are teaching you up to date. Uh, start full, who are doing what they are practicing, what they are teaching, and teaching what they are practicing. And so I am, I'm, the co I'm, the co I'm the program coordinator and I teach in the program, uh, but I have other colleagues who are also teaching the program, uh, great background, great experience, and they love teaching. I've, I've been in the industry for, for a while and, and I have uh, degrees from training universities, but what I love most about this program is the fact that uh, we have uh, students are coming from all kinds of backgrounds, and by the end of the program, they leave acquiring those skills they need to make better decisions with, with data. Okay, and so what will my academic year look like? And so here I have a high level summary of what uh, a, a typical academic year will look like in the program for a domestic student. So in the first semester, uh, you're looking at courses that really help you to start understanding what are some of those tools I need. Um, to know how to use in order to mine the data or to make better decisions. So you're looking at you know, courses around business intelligence. Uh, we have a course that, that introduces you to some of the programming language like Python uh, that will be very helpful when it comes to data mining or building AI applications. Um, we have a course around SQL. Uh, we also have project management courses and, and business analytics courses. Uh, statistical analysis and of course management science. And so semester one is more like the introductory semester where we begin to introduce you to this world of business analytics. And then in semester two, you start uh, getting into uh, the, 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 the deeper courses or the courses that uh, requires uh, more, um, like more intensive, for lack of a better word. So you're looking at data mining, applied artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, marketing analytics, financial analytics, and of course, business strategy. And then your final semester, which is really, um, the, for me, the most exciting semester, because that's where I teach. Uh, you get to, to all the skills you've, you've, you've acquired in semester one, semester two. In the final semester, there are two parts of the final semester. In the first part, most times you're working with a real client, working with a real company, you're applying all those skills to help solve an analytics problem within an organization. And then in the second part of the final semester, you actually go on a work placement where you work, you know, um, eight hours per, every day, you know, for five days a week, you're working in a company where you're actually using those skills you've acquired and solving real problems. Great, I'd love to jump in here for a moment, Patrick. We know that our work placements here at the college are very important for our students, not only as a learning opportunity, but also uh, a way for them to build some skills for their resume and some actual experience. Can you give a quick example of maybe some of the companies in the Kingston area that some of your students have done their placements at? Absolutely, absolutely. Happy to do that. Uh, we've, we've had uh, so an, uh, one company that comes to mind is in Vista, um, is it, again, local. Uh, engineering company. We had one of our students, uh, some of our students have done their placement there. And it's interesting because the last student that did their placement at that company got hired full time after their placement. Uh, we also have another company, Assurance Solutions, in the insurance industry. Uh, we have students again go through um, their placement, do their placement at that company. And another good news is most of our students that have done their placement there have been hired there full time. Um, at the IBM, I mean, yeah, the students did 
her placement at IBM uh, out in Calgary, and then she was hired there full time. Now, I'm careful, I'm not saying that all students <laughs> are doing that plan of work. Absolutely. That's what we love to hear. Our students getting careers after they leave here is important, and it's great to hear real world examples. In fact, I think there's a graduate of your program that actually got a job here at the college. Yes, on. He works in our kind of data and intelligence and using data to help our college make decisions in various departments. So we're hiring our own grads too, which is fantastic. Yes. Awesome. Uh, the, the one thing I wanted to talk to me, so some of the questions I do get from students about the placement, um, you know, revolves around does the college help students to get placement? You know, whose responsibility is it to get or look for placement? Um, and so one of the things I tell students that it's, it's a dual responsibility. We're saying that we do encourage our students, you know, if, if you have someone in your network or if you know a company that might be looking for the kind of skills you're acquiring here, you know, feel free to reach out to them, uh, let them know what you can you can offer them and see if they have an opportunity for you. But we also work behind the scenes, you know, through our networks uh, to, to, to get opportunity for our students. So it's a dual uh, responsibility when it comes to looking for placement. Uh, do SLC grads from this program get jobs? Absolutely. Uh, we signed a program in 2017, and as I speak, um, all the graduates from the first cohorts are working in the field, uh, the second cohort. Uh, so the first cohort was in September of 2017. Uh, the second cohort was in January of 2018. And I'm thinking hard here, but um, I'm thinking hard to, to remember any of the graduates of the second cohort who is currently not working in the field. Uh, and so there's a high um, job potential opportunity within this field. Now, again, we have one or two graduates or some graduates who are not yet working but who are, uh, have greater uh, opportunities to get good jobs within the field. Now, do all our graduates end up working in this field? No. Uh, we have graduates that they gain the knowledge and they decide that, you know what, I've gained this knowledge, I love what I've studied, but I think I want to focus on somewhere else. Uh, so we have graduates that decide not to work in the field, and we have graduates who are still looking for jobs in the field. Well, from my perspective, the opportunity is there and the potential is significant. Yeah. Uh, we do have, um, again, other opportunities for graduates to further education uh, when they graduate from the program. Uh, there are international opportunities, for example, in Ireland, uh, there are domestic opportunities uh, here in Canada, and there are also programs and other graduate certificates that our graduates can leverage while they're in Kingston and while they're at St. Lawrence College. So, um... And Patrick, you can probably speak to this a little bit. Or, or how long have you been in Kingston? I've been in Kingston now for about 17, 17 years. years. So you you came here and, and enjoyed it. Um, what, do you, what, what is your perspective from someone that hasn't lived in Kingston your whole life? Why would someone want to come and live here and work here? Uh, I love Kingston. I love Kingston. I came here to, to school and uh, one of the things I love, uh, I like about Kingston is the fact that everything is 15 minutes away from where you are. You know, so you don't spend a lot of time. Sorry about that for audio hiccup. Continue. Okay, uh, from a student perspective, I think Kingston is a fantastic learning opportunity environment because you're able to really focus on learning. Um, you don't spend a lot of time in traffic. You know, uh, you have a good bus system, and, and also the people in Kingston are very, very nice. In the summer, oh my goodness, summer is very beautiful in Kingston. Uh, the waterfront, the, the, the vibrant downtown, so many things to see and do uh, in Kingston uh, during the summer. Uh, Kingston is also uh, very well located. It's right between Toronto and Ottawa and Montreal, and even close to the U.S. So uh, every now and then, if you feel like driving down to Toronto or going to Montreal, Ottawa, Kingston is uh, perfectly located between these uh, big cities. Okay. I'll jump in a little bit here. Just want to talk about some of the new um, developments on our Kingston campus. In the last um, three to four years, we've underwent a significant 
um, expansion here, upwards of almost $30 million um, on tri-campus, but a lot of that went to Kingston. We have a brand new Student Life and Innovation Center, a new gymnasium. We've added a, a new pub and restaurant that you can oversee the gymnasium. It's great for socializing. We have all kinds of new study space throughout the college that allows students to you know, sit down with their laptop, work at their own convenience while here on campus, um, new fitness and health centers, all kinds of great things that have been a, a tremendous addition for our students um, studying here at the college. Um, paying for college. Um, if you're a domestic student, you have access to OSAP, and, but beyond that, we have great financial aid um, officers here at the college that will help you. You'll see the phone numbers and emails there if you need to connect with someone. Uh, bursaries and scholarships. This is another thing that I, is really important because we know that there is a bit of a financial burden on some people coming to post-secondary. We're here to help. We have hundreds of scholarships here at the college um, that, are, that allow people from various different types of backgrounds and qualifications to apply for them. You only have to fill out the application one time and you have access to all of those, which is great time saver. So, um, Check, out, check that out on the web and you can see the phone number and email there if you have any further questions. There's some more key contacts here. I won't go over them all in great detail, but you can see residence, bookstore, um, anything in student services if you may need, if you admit perhaps you have some accessibility or, or learning barriers for coming to college that you need some help with. We're here to help you. Um, there's lots of great phone numbers here for you and, and don't be afraid to ask. You can reach out to Patrick after as well if you have some questions about coming in and, and various things about the college and he'll be able to help we're going to put his contact info up at the end of the, of the presentation next steps if you want to come and visit us uh, come to come see us at open house that's on saturday april 4th 2020 at each of our campuses but the one here in kingston is where the business analytics program is run out of we'd be happy to see you anytime it'd be great for you to come here get a tour of the campus you can meet patrick and other faculty you can read students of the program to get their perspective it is a great opportunity for you to walk the halls and, and see envision yourself here as an SLC student down the road there's a link there stlawrencecollegeca slash open house and you can get all the information there we hope to see you in a couple months of time